All right, guys, welcome back to the garage. It is Monday, April the 3rd, 2023. It's been a little while since I've uh, taken a video. I have done a few little small projects along the way and, uh, you know, I haven't necessarily taken any video. I've been working on the uh, Alpha a little bit, just uh, small jobs, uh, not worthy of taking a video. So the Alpha is pretty much ready to go back to its owner, uh, although he's not going to be picking this up probably till like mid-May. So the Alpha will stay for a little bit longer. This is my 73 TR6 on this side of the garage. And uh, we're just in the process of getting it uncovered in order to try to start it up after about a six month hibernation as we're going to start getting organized to bring our spring projects into the garage. So I've got a Lynn helping me this morning. He's actually gone to fetch the trailer that's at his house that actually has a car in the trailer. So we're gonna be swapping the car that's in the trailer for the TR6. So. Uh, like I said, first thing I need to do is move all the vehicles out of the driveway in order to be able to get a trailer in here. We gotta get the uh, TR6 started up. We're gonna relocate the Alpha to this side of the garage where the TR6 is, and we're gonna bring the project in where the Alpha is. So a little bit of work to get things organized this morning. I have uh, sort of cleaned the garage yesterday and over the weekend, so it's looking a little bit cleaner. Uh, as far as my garage is concerned, I still have a ton of stuff in here. But anyway, let's uh, get crack a -lackin'. All right, we've got everything moved out of the garage and uh, situated around the neighborhood. <laughs> anyway, uh, TR6 is uncovered and I uh, guess I didn't wash it before I put it away. Quite a bit of brake dust on the uh, front there. Anyway, we've got it uh, hooked up just to a booster. As I mentioned, I didn't put it on a uh, trickle charger over the winter. I should have probably planned on that over the last few weeks getting this uh, ready, but today was kind of a spur of the moment uh, idea. I don't get a lot of days off work, so uh, gotta take advantage of them when I can. So anyway, it's looking good. I'd forgotten I'd put me out of seats in it. <laughs> so uh, we'll jump in here and see if we can get this thing fired up. Well, you probably wouldn't believe it if I told you, it actually fired on the uh, first crank. So run a little rough at the moment, but bring up the temperature I'm sure it'll smooth out. It's been a long winter. It's always nice to hear him run after a long winter's nap. So we'll uh, just let it warm up. Maybe take it for a quick spin around the block. I don't think there's too much salt left on the roads. So I'm gonna wait for a to arrive with the trailer and then we'll do a little swapping. 59 TR3 over here at the side of the house waiting patiently. And watch I don't take my welder out on the way out of the garage. It's pretty tight in here. Alright, back in a bit. Alright, the Alpha is being relocated to its uh, short term spot. So we're just waiting now for the arrival of the trailer. So we can get the car out of that and in this side of the garage, the empty side of the garage, which is looking fairly organized. I don't know if you've noticed, some of you who've been watching my channel for a while might have noticed that I've got a new toolbox. I uh, got rid of the small red toolbox. I'd kind of outgrown that a long time ago. So I've got a larger box, not really a good space for it there, but the only space I have, I do have some grand plans at some point to uh, change up the whole workbench area and get that into a a proper uh, area with cabinets, overhead cabinets and side cabinets to move all these chemicals out there into cabinets and possibly drop this or get rid of this mezzanine so I can go back further or a little deeper in the garage. So I don't know if that'll happen or not. I did start working on that last year, but uh, stalled out on that as I ended up having to do other projects. But who knows, it's a, a future project in the works and it's something that I'd like to do just to get this garage area a little bit more functional. But for now, it's good. So Canada geese are probably here returning. Loud Canada geese. Anyway, we'll uh, get ready for Alin's arrival. All right, Alin's back with the trailer. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. So, yeah, we, I guess we need to unveil the project Can or projects. Finally. Well, some of you might have uh, seen this on Instagram or uh, Facebook, but we haven't done anything for, as far as YouTube is concerned. But uh, 
picked up another project for those of you who don't follow those two other social media platforms. So I guess without uh, further ado, as we'd say, let's uh, drop the, the ramp and see what's in here. Three, two, one, go! Oh, look at that. Another rusty beauty. There you go. <laughs> anyway, 57 uh, Triumph TR3, so smallmouth TR3. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about it, more about it once we get it uh, unloaded and safely in the garage. Hey, the cops are after him already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the uh, 57 is safely in the garage. So, so a little bit of a story to this car. Uh, I actually bought this car back in October of last year, and it was a little bit of an adventure. Uh, with the purchase, the car was located in the U.S. I bought it from a, a really nice gentleman by the name of David. Well, my payment actually got lost, although I uh, sent it uh, registered and tracked uh, through the mail. Uh, my actual payment for the car got uh, misplaced, waylaid somehow, and I ended up getting about, it took about two months for me to actually get the uh, the whole fiasco worked out and get my money back deposited in the bank. So. Uh, the plan was to pick this up last year, but uh, that obviously with the payment uh, problem, uh, then that rolled into getting into the winter months and I didn't want to actually go down and pick it up with the threat of uh, getting stuck in a snowstorm. My truck's only two wheel drive, so I don't particularly drive that in the winter. So David uh, graciously uh, offered to store the car for me until the spring. And I actually went down with uh, another buddy of mine, Skip from New York, who's been in uh, a few of my other videos, uh, tagged along with me last weekend. And we drove to uh, Granville, Ohio over a uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, to pick this up. And uh, got back last week with it, and it's been in the trailer ever since. So a little bit more info about the car, and some of this information I may have wrong. Uh, but I believe this was a... I'm not going to say failed restoration, but started restoration. I think it was about 22 years ago. Uh, David, the previous owner, uh, buddy owned a Morgan restoration shop, and I believe this car was brought in there to be restored. Had some work done to it, and then the owner uh, decided not to continue with it. From my understanding, uh, we think the engine might have been rebuilt, or uh, there are no receipts uh, for parts purchased or work done, so that's uh, yet to be determined. It does have an engine and a gearbox, a four-speed gearbox in it. Um, and we want to flip this up while your grill there. It did come with a bunch of new parts. As you can see, there's a brand new grill and grill surround there. So here's the uh, actual engine bay in here. And the previous owner has told me that he's fogged the cylinders. I actually had started this up and it said it sounded good and had a good oil pressure. So the engine apparently is in good shape. So it actually has the radiator, the original radiator in there as well. And uh, this original radiator cap, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, so failed restoration. And David bought it, I think, with the intent of uh, doing some restoration work on it. David's got a few other cars, including a TR3B, which I think he's going to focus his attention on. So this car has come to me. So uh, it has uh, had some body work done to it already. The floors have been put in. The uh, sills have been done. Uh, and the body is in generally much better condition than my 59. So let me tell you about what the plans are for this car. Okay, so here are the plans for this car. And uh, Alin doesn't actually probably even know what the plans are, but... No, I, I only know the final result. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> so what's happening is, um, obviously you know I have a 59 that I'm sort of midway through the restoration. I have a playlist going on that i think with well over 100 videos so the intent is to continue on with my 59 restoration but using uh parts and pieces of this car to aid me in that process so although i would really like a small mouth tr3 since i already have a 60 uh, tr3 a wide mouth tr3 i really like to have a small mouth tr3 in my collection but I promised Tom, the previous owner of my 59, that I'd finish his restoration, and I feel I would feel really bad if I got rid of that car and actually jumped on this 57 to continue the restoration of this project. So I'm going to continue the 59 restoration, utilizing some of the parts uh, from this 57 project that we have here in front of me. Now, David, the previous owner of this car, is aware of what my intentions are. So this car will live on, but it will not live on with me. This gentleman over here, 
uh, will be taking the ownership of the 57 TR3. So Alain officially will own a smallmouth TR3, a 57. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him all of the parts and pieces pertaining to the 57, like the front grill, for example, um, the seats, for example, um, the you know, which comes with a brand new insert for the grill and surround piece. This car actually came with a lot of new parts and pieces that was uh, kind of the clincher for me. Things like wiring harness, which I can use, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so things like the uh, the bonnet or the the boot here with the uh, outside locks on it was also for a 57. So anything that's pertaining to a 57 we will be going to a Lynn and the rest will be staying with me. So both cars will live on. I, I do have enough parts and pieces to probably complete two and a half cars at this point in time. I've told a Lynn that I probably have probably eight fenders in storage, for example. So um, what the process is going to be is we're going to figure out I've already told Alin this and he's okay with this. He is the rusty beauty master. So I've told him that he's going to get the worst of the worst parts. So I'm going to take the best parts for my project. He is going to get the worst parts. Uh, he's okay with that. That's what best friends do. <laughs> <laughs> they give you the worst of the worst. So, so the reason I'm doing this is, like I said, there are certain parts of this car that are much better in much better condition than the 59 that I have. So this is going to help me move my project along much more quickly. Obviously, you know, I have a lot of projects in the background with a recently purchased uh, 1970 TR6 PI. I've just added another project. So um, I'm going to try to move this project along a little bit more quickly uh, and not do as much uh, metal work on the 59 as what I had intended on. So that'll be left to the uh, metal master over there. Anyway, so so that's the surprise. So Alin gets a 57 TR3. I get some help with my 59 uh, TR3 project. So we're looking forward to uh, getting underway. Of course, Alin's got other projects on the go that will uh, prevent him from working on his TR3 project uh, for Probably, a, a, maybe months. for at least a few months, right? You got the GT6, you have a TR6, now you have a TR3. I'm a bad influence yeah. on you, but at least you got something to look forward to in the future. project to until my retirement, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, my Don't projects were... Don't go for any more people. <laughs> my projects were supposed to start in my retirement too, but it didn't quite work out that way. So anyway, there's the introduction to the, uh, the 57 project. I think what we'll do now is uh, we're just going to put it up on jack stands. We've got it pretty much situated where we want it to be. Uh, what the intent is, obviously, when we get rid of the Alpha, we're going to bring the 59 TR3 in on this side of the garage, and we'll start uh, figuring out what parts need to be swapped uh, back and forth and uh, where we want to uh, begin on the, the uh, um, continuation of the 59 project. For example, uh, the frame and uh, engine suspension is all done on the 59. It's been almost six years since I've really looked at that car and it's been outside for six years. So I may decide to actually go backwards and disassemble it and start from scratch again, but we'll see. I'm not sure what the process is gonna be. We haven't uncovered that car in, in five and a half to six years. So we'll see what it looks like once it gets uncovered. Um, anyway, I'm rambling a little bit, but that's about it. So uh, two more projects, the uh, 57 TR3 and the 59 TR3 coming at you in the uh, the near future. At least I can, uh, now that this is in the garage, I can at least start, uh, you know, working on the body and doing lots of sanding, lots of priming, and, uh, lots of fitting, etc., and have something to tinker on when I can. All right, that's it for now. We will see you on the next video, whenever that is. Um, but uh, there is the introduction to the new projects. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.